So I'm Tyreen Martinson, and I'm a member of One Hope Church, and I, I love being here. I love being able to talk about Jesus. But every time I sign up, and I think, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to talk about with those verses. Usually months go by between the time I signed up and when I actually speak. And things change in there because life is interesting and exciting, good and bad. And I realized that maybe my original plan wasn't going to work. And then sometimes, even like yesterday, while I was sitting in the coffee shop with my daughter Anna and I was going through my PowerPoint slides and I was actually <laughs> tearing up over a story I was thinking about sharing about my uh, sister-in-law and her late husband who had MS. And my daughter said to me, is that really the story that you want to share? And I thought, I don't know. I mean, I thought, yes, it is. And I thought, well, no, it's not because it's not my story. And it's, even though it's a, it's a, a very Bible-based, faith-based story about their lives and how faithful they were through 30 years of hardship, it's still not all of what I want to talk about today. So I had to kind of pause and think, what am I really talking about? And so yesterday, <laughs> I changed my message. And so anyway, so you're getting what I can give you based on all those changes. Um, I journaled about it in my journal. I, I journal a lot. And as some of you know, I, I like to write a lot. I write stories and poems and novels. And some of them are good and some of them stay on my shelf uh, <laughs> because they have to. So today, I really, again, I, I went through everything I had done and I realized that the most important part of my preparation for my message was stuff that I'd done in my journal. When I took each scripture verse and wrote about it for a little while and thought about what it meant. So we're kind of going to recreate that here. I hope you don't mind. So, and I don't know if I know how to do this, but we'll see if I, can I point this the right way? Right arrow. Okay, oh, okay, so here we are, first verse. This is the NIV version. I'm not quite sure which version we had on screen, and but there's some little word changes. I'll talk about some of them. Therefore, we're going to stop right there. Therefore, so what did we already learn from all of Pastor Peter's sermons and Joel's sermons before this? We learned that everybody's a sinner. That's what the first you know, four chapters of Romans really tell us, that we have all sinned. And uh, we, we don't have the hope of saving ourselves. That God did that for us. And it reminds us of all of those things. And Abram... The last little bit we had last week was about Abram and how he believed and it was credited to him as righteousness and how that was the anatomy of faith. So I recommend, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back and watch Peter's sermon uh, from last week. It's, it's very, very short, but it's so good. So therefore, so based on all of that, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the big difference between all the stuff that happened before um, in the Old Testament. We now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I sometimes think that we take that for granted. I know I do. Um, and then sometimes I think that I forget I have peace with God. And I start guilt tripping myself about all sorts of things I've done instead of going directly to him and saying, Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Please forgive me for this too and help me and guide me in your peace to walk through this. So that peace is, is huge. That's the change. Um, I think Pastor Peter had a really cool title for this message and it was something about it's all changed or it's all different. Uh, and that, I think that's the change, is that we now have peace with God. But it can be easy to forget in our crazy, busy lives. I want to turn the page, but I'm not ready yet. So uh, what I need to do is this part. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. There's a reason I've got those two pieces underlined. So... 
we've obtained access into this grace through Jesus, through God, and we get to stand. Sometimes I think we really want an action piece. You know, we really want to, to go back to this idea of working our way into heaven, which doesn't work. Uh, we, we know that. Um, but we want to do something. So we got an action verb there. We can stand. That's what we got. We can stand up. Uh, and we can boast in the hope of the glory of God. That's something else that God gives us to do. He doesn't say we get to earn our way to heaven, but once he's done all the work for us, we get to stand up in it and boast in the hope of the glory of God. So not only that, but we can glory or rejoice at our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces perseverance. And yes, the verse keeps going. We're going to, actually the next verse keeps going. So glory is the word used in the NIV translation. Rejoice is the word used in the ESV translation. Um, and when we think about that, what in the world does it mean to glory or rejoice in our sufferings? Does that mean we should be like, yes, I want to go suffer, circus of pain? <laughs> no, I don't think that's what it means, right? I, I, not, I don't think we actually need to go find suffering. It usually finds us in this life. Um, uh, we don't have to go places for it. Um, so, but what is it about? Um, there's, there's a couple different ways we can look at this verse. There's the suffering uh, due to persecution for faith in Christ. There's a lot of uh, commentaries that really kind of land here, and they talk about how there's verbal and physical persecution to the point of death due to a proclaimed faith in Christ. This usually takes place uh, in places where it's illegal to be Christian, uh, places in the world that we don't live. I mean, I don't know about you, but I haven't been threatened with death lately. I did get once, one time at a book fair, a guy actually told me he was going, you know, someday I was going to have my head chopped off because I wrote Christian fantasy, and those two things should not go together, according to him. So um, you don't have to agree or disagree <laughs> with him or me on that, uh, but I, th that was the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me at a book fair. Um, <laughs> so um, I, I can say that I think that most of us really haven't experienced this persecution unless we've been in an active mission field where people um, are threatening us. Um, most of us deal with the other kind of suffering on the other side of the screen there, um, suffering due to life circumstances in a broken world. And this is still, you got to remember this, our, our faith is different than what the world expects. And being Christian is standing against the tide of what's going on in the world. And Satan doesn't, Satan's already lost, but he is really still fighting against us. There's still a war going on for our souls and for people, maybe not our souls, but people's souls out there in the world. And when we deal with suffering, it could be easy to turn away from God. And it could be easy to say, oh, well, God didn't answer my prayer. I'm done with him. Um, but that's not what we're called to do. And that's why it's, it's really uh, tricky to deal with um, what I consider the prosperity gospel. We don't want to get caught up in thinking that our lives are going to be easy, uh, that we get to push the easy button because we have faith. Um, suffering still happens. And I don't want to, like, you know, again, we don't want to rejoice in it and go look for it, but it does still happen. And... We can't um, base our faith on a magic easy button or in the hopes that that's how God's going to respond to our prayers. I'm not saying God can't do miracles. He can. I've, I've seen it, uh, and, and I'm, so I'm not saying that, but I think it's important that we trust him and walk with him through all this other stuff, whether it's Illness, grief, assault, abusive relationships, verbal attacks, human trafficking, road rage, mass violence, war, loss of life or property due to flood or fire, job loss, homelessness, addiction, mental issues, and all the other rotten stuff that's out there. 
Um, I'm not saying we should stay in abusive relationships, by the way, that's not where that's in there. But uh, what I am saying is that we need to trust God with all of those things. And the miracle may not be a cure. The miracle may be that God keeps us strong enough to handle it, that we can persevere through all of it and find joy in it. Because I don't know about you, but I've had medical stuff, and it's bizarre. You can find funny moments in a hospital room. You can find silly things to laugh about. I have laughed in a cemetery, yes, uh, not long after a funeral. Um, so, I mean, you can find things that are joyful, and you can praise God in those circumstances for those things. One day, I was at a hospital with my mom. She was in the emergency room, and a couple days before that, one of my daughters had given me a devotional, and I happened to have it in my bag that I took with me that I, I mean, I wasn't planning to go to the hospital, but it happened to be there, and I hadn't even really started it. So I opened it up, and we started it together. And I, I thank God for that. It was a provision. The words in that devotional were the right words at the right time. And again, that may not look like miracle cure, but it's a little miracle. It's a provision that God gives us, that joy, the peace, the, the knowledge that he's with us in tough circumstances. So, um, let's see. So in the Bible, there's a lot of different things about suffering, so I'm going to touch on just three different places. First Peter 416, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. So I think that particularly is for those who are missionaries and struggling uh, in places where they're being persecuted distinctly for that, although again, we do, we sometimes get verbally attacked by people <coughs> for being Christian here in the United States. Um, and then John 9, verses 1 through 3, this is just a very small part of a larger story. As he, Jesus, went along, he saw a, blind, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. So it's not always a comfortable thing. I think sometimes allow, God allows things to happen so that we can continue to praise his name and that other people can see that and come to know him. So it's, it's hard, um, but I think that's, it really happens. Um, I will share a little bit of that story that I wasn't thinking I was going to share, but um, my sister-in-law, whose husband had MS, um, he survived longer than anyone expected him to um, for many, many years without being able to move from his neck down. His wife did everything for him. They never hired nursing care. They relied on family and friends to help out when she was at work. They were able to laugh together and pray together. They went to worship together. He led Bible studies. His pastor would bring people to his house. There were people in their church and in their community who came to faith and had their faith strengthened by seeing his faith throughout all of those circumstances and his trust that God was going to cure him and give him an awesome life in heaven. So the works of God might be displayed in us when we're having a good day, and they might be displayed in us when we're having a really bad day. So it's something to kind of think about when we trust God. He can give us joy. He can also give us strength to deal with really tough things. <coughs> Um, so 2 Corinthians uh, 1, 3 through 4, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So it's kind of going along those lines. When we've experienced something and we've been able to trust God, we can comfort those around us when they're going through tough things. Or we can simply be amazed by the strength in which we see people handle the stuff that they, they have to handle. So I think that our lives are a testimony, even when we don't 
speak out that testimony, if we are trusting God in all circumstances, our lives are a living testimony. Um, so, um, I kind of think I already answered this question. What's the purpose of rejoicing or giving God glory in the midst of suffering? Um, I, I think we just have to stand firm in our faith. And it might be standing firm in our minds and our hearts if we can't actually physically stand up. Um, we can stay firm against all trials, uh, not with perfection or saintliness, but with honesty and with our trust in Christ. Um, and sometimes we mess up, and we get back to being firm in Christ by turning to him when we mess up. And all this becomes perseverance, and that perseverance, as it says in this next verse, um, or in the verse with the, the next verse after that, not only that, but we glory in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces perseverance, and perseverance character and character hope. So perseverance... It's just the per persistence and tenacity to keep going, the effort required to do something and keep doing it to the end, even if it's hard. And character, according to the dictionary, it's an attribute or attributes which distinguish a person from others. And I think from the Bible, biblical standpoint, the character that God is hoping that we find is character in him so we become Christ-like. Um, so, keep going. Um, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So, there's no shame to hope in Christ. I think the world tries to make us feel bad sometimes that we're Christian because of misinterpretations of, of things that have happened. Um, but there is no shame in putting our hope in Christ. And um, this reminded me of uh, some verses from Isaiah 61. There is no, sh uh, instead of your shame, you will have receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance, and so you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. So it may happen in this lifetime, it may happen in heaven, but we know we have hope that God is going to renew us and strengthen us. He's going to double the portion, whatever it is. He's going to give us everlasting joy. Some of that we experience today, some of it we'll experience later. But we know that it's true, because he's promised it. So, kind of wrapping up more verses here, I don't know how long I've been talking I didn't time myself, which is dangerous. I know that could be trouble. Um, so, <laughs> since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received re reconciliation. We can't do it ourselves. <laughs> um, oh, did I skip a slide? I did. Oh, my goodness. I skipped a slide in my notes. Sorry. I'll go back to the one that's on the screen right now. Um, <laughs> so you see, at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the un ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, like I was saying, we can't do it ourselves. Um, and I think what really gets me is that at just the right time, so this is God's plan all along. It was God's plan because he knew us, because he created us. He knows our very DNA. He knows how broken this world is. He knows how broken we are. Um, so Christ had to die for the ungodly because we are ungodly. Um, we were still sinners, and Christ died for us. It is amazing how much God loves us. Um, and I have to admit, I am going to be pretty quick on this slide. I already read it out loud. So if we look at these verses, um, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. Um, 
and how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? I know I don't often think about it very often. I think about how Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and that's our salvation. When we think about Jesus being raised from the dead, how much more are we saved knowing that we have life, that we have this everlasting life ahead of us that he's gifted us to, and that <laughs> how much more can God do in, in our lives because of Jesus' resurrection, because of the Holy Spirit that he's given us. Um, all right. So let's talk action items. We always want action items, right? At the end of a sermon, what's the practical thing we can do? How can we make things happen? Um, however, I don't think they're what the world expects. Um, what do we get to do? We get to stand in faith by God's grace. We get to experience reconciliation. We get to glory or rejoice in our sufferings, maybe give glory to God in our sufferings. We get to trust God and place all our hope in him, and we get to boast in the Lord. Those don't look like your typical action items. Those aren't, I served food at the homeless shelter. I did that good deed over here. I handed out water bottles at a, at a tough event. Um, I'm not saying that those aren't good things. I think that part of standing firm in God is living a life that shows that we love him. Um, but reality, <laughs> God just wants us to be with him in a relationship. He wants us to boast in what he has done for us. And he wants us to boast in his love and the hope that he gives us. Um, so, I have Bible verses up there about that. I'm just going to keep going. So the challenge is to stand firm, to persevere, to hope, to experience reconciliation, and to boast in the Lord. Um, that's, that's what we get. That's what God gives us. And, I mean, in addition to our being saved, he gives us the, the joy of boasting in him, to, of giving him praise. And I hope some of you like music as much as I do because I love to sing, and so <laughs> when I think, oh, I get, I get to worship God, that's, that's one of the things God wants me to do. I'm like, awesome, I can do that part. I love to sing. Um, <laughs> but it, it's not just about music. Boasting in the Lord is also acknowledging just how great he is. And it doesn't have to be done to music. Um, so that is, I think, unless I have something else, nope, that's the end of my message. It's pretty simple. I just walked through the Bible verses, and um, I hope you know how much God loves you, because I think that's the biggest piece of the whole Bible, is that God loves you. He loves me. He wants us to love him and each other like he loves us.